The most crucial piece of gear you need to play slide guitar, other than your guitar of course, is a bottleneck slide. Now, maybe you've never purchased a slide before. Maybe you're looking to purchase your first slide. Maybe you're looking to experiment with other slide styles and materials. Well, today is your day, because on today's show, I'll be sharing with you 10 guitar slide manufacturers you need to know about. And I'm willing to bet that you haven't heard of the majority of the slide makers on my list. Hey TAC family, welcome to episode 243 of the Acoustic Tuesday Show. This show is designed to inject your guitar journey with a weekly dose of fun, focus, progress, and inspiration. Today you'll be meeting TAC family member and Guitars for Vets participant Trish, and she's going to share with you a format that you can use to achieve any guitar goal that you have. She's also going to throw in a little bit of a guitar travel tip as well. You'll also see which guitar lick the TAC family is working on today, and it's a really cool chord shape derived lick in the key of A minor. Plus, your weekly dose of acoustic news awaits, which includes a songwriting superhero's origin story and an American primitive guitarist that you need to hear, and you likely have never heard of him before, plus a whole bunch more guitar geek stuff. But first, let's go ahead and slide in to my list of 10 guitar guitar slide manufacturers that you need to know about. I feel like bottleneck slides are a lot like fingerprints because they're all different. Each slide is made up of different materials. Each slide issues a different tone. Each slide feels different on your finger. That's why this list exists. I wanted to create a list of slide manufacturers to encourage your exploration and experimentation with various slide types and materials. Now, I also want to mention that it's a little intimidating to either get your first slide or maybe go out on a limb and try something completely different. I do believe this list will extinguish that intimidation. Now, I should also mention this. I have certain criteria that I look for in a slide that works for me. Every player's list of criteria is different. That's why I didn't pick out 10 slides that I like, because what I like is likely different than what you like. My list of criteria is it needs to be heavy, it needs to be comfortable, and I generally favor brass or bronze slides. Again, that's different for everybody. That's why I just want to share with you these 10 manufacturers. So let's go ahead and dig in. First up is Rock Slide. You need to know about Rock Slide because they offer a wide array of options. And two things specifically that I want to call out with Rock Slides. They make their slides extremely comfortable for two reasons. Number one, they offer a cutout on the inside of the slide uh, where your finger meets your palm. This allows you to actually move your finger within the slide without the edge of the slide digging into your palm. The second thing that they do is they flatten out the side of the slide that is in contact with your other fretting hand fingers. This allows the slide to be nice and secure on your hand. It doesn't rotate around and it feels nice and solid. They offer glass slides. They offer metal slides. In fact, two of my favorites are the amber glass slide because it has thicker walls and their uh, regular standard brass slide. Rocky Mountain Slide Company is next on my list, and they're on my list because of the wide range of slides that they offer. They offer ceramic slides for a, a more mellow tone. They offer brass slides. They offer the classic medicine bottle slides. And check this out. They offer stone slides, slides made out of stone. I, I just, I think these are so cool because they offer a tone somewhere in between ceramic and glass. It's still warm, it's still mellow, yet it has a sharpness and an attack to it that I just can't describe. A very unique offering and certainly a slide company worth checking out. Next up is a company named Big Heart Slides. The first slide I ever purchased was a Big Heart Slide. It was the only slide in the shop. I didn't know what I was buying, but I was pleasantly surprised and it was kind of cool. It was shaped like a heart. Now that was a steel or a chrome slide, but the slide I want to call your attention to that is absolutely amazing is their bronze bomber slide. It's a very thick walled slide and it is made out of bronze and it sounds 
awesome on acoustic guitars. Again, I favor bronze or brass slides, so I just want to throw that out there. This is a slide that works for me. It might not work for you, but don't worry because they offer a wide array of various options. They have an aluminum slide, which is on the little bit lighter side of things. Not my favorite, but it could be yours. And they have a custom shop as well. It's the only slide manufacturer I know that offers a custom shop, a custom option. So very cool, and you should definitely check them out. If you're looking for something maybe a little bit different, I suggest you check out Square Amps out of Austin, Texas. They make a resin-based guitar slide that is shatter resistant. This resin is relatively light and it allows them to offer so many different options in terms of aesthetics. I'm talking colors, I'm talking patterns, it's all there, you gotta check it out. But these slides are generally one of one, meaning what you see is what you get. And if you don't get it and it's gone, it might never be replaced. So if you see something you like, you better act fast and get it headed to your house. Next up is a general guitar accessory manufacturer, most known for the picks that they make, but they do make a slide that is worthy of mention. They actually make a couple of slides, but one that I wanna call your attention to is called the Pork Knuckle Slide. This is a ceramic slide with a ribbed interior to encourage a better grip and less slipping with the slide. Certainly one to check out if you're looking for a mellow tone and a slide that doesn't just fling off your finger, especially if you have a tendency to perspire while you play. Now, if you wanna enter the world of various glass slides, this next manufacturer is for you, Diamond Bottlenecks. Now, glass slides issue generally a more smooth tone, less bite than a metal slide, uh, silky, dare I say glassy, uh, a great option in your tonal offering. And Diamond Bottlenecks has a ton of glass slides to pick from. The most notable one that I would encourage you to check out is the Blue Diamond. This slide uh, is, is a glass slide that's in a cobalt blue color. It's got a nice thick wall to it and it feels awesome on your finger. But of course they have a bunch of different glass ones to check out, some really wild patterns and uh, some signature slides as well that uh, um, well, they're just darn cool. So make sure to check them out as well. Now, I wanna be specific about this next manufacturer. I wanna mention a very specific slide because the next manufacturer is Jim Dunlop. If you go to the Jim Dunlop site, you're gonna see everything from guitar pedals to strings to straps to picks, you name it, it's on there. And yes, of course, they do sell slides. But specifically, I wanna call your attention to the Dunlop Heavy Walled Glass Slide. The walls are thicker on this slide and I think it works fantastic on acoustic guitar. They do offer other slides. I'm not taking away from them, but I think their best offering is the heavy walled glass slide. So I wanna encourage you to check that one out. The next manufacturer creates one of my all time favorite slides, Latch Lake Music Products, and they are responsible for the Acoustic Glide slide. This is a heavy walled brass slide that sounds amazing on acoustic guitar. And for good reason, Leo Kaki helped develop this slide. No, this slide won't allow you to play like Leo Kaki, but I think it's rather cool that a guitar great helped develop this slide. One of my all time favorites, the first slide that when I played it on acoustic guitar, I thought to myself, boom, this is the tone I'm looking for. I gotta get specific again. I have to get specific again because the next slide comes from Daddario. Now, if you look at Daddario's website, again, they make everything from strings to straps to strap buttons to maintenance tools. They make everything. Slides, of course, they make as well. But one specific slide knocks my socks off, and that is the Rich Robinson Signature Slide. It's got the right heft, it's got the right feel, and it sounds damn good. Now they do make other slides again, um, but I feel like with these larger manufacturers, sometimes they make a slide that just simply fits the category for five bucks, seven bucks, 10 bucks, but performance isn't the strong point there. It's just a slide shaped object. Don't get me wrong, you can get started with those, but you wanna start with a good slide so that you have a good experience. I think the Rich Robinson slide is a great one and one that you should strongly consider, especially if you wanna flirt with the idea of a brass or bronze slide. And finally, I wanna let you know about a slide manufacturer that is way under the radar. 
because they're over the pond, I believe in Germany. Uh, the company Daddy Slide. Now, I have to blame Charlie Parr for this one. The last time we played a gig together, we were sound checking and he's like, Tone, you gotta check out this slide. It's amazing. I believe it was a phosphor bronze slide and it had the most beautiful weight and balance to it. Uh, the, the most stunning slide I've ever played. And it was made by Daddy Slide. These are custom slides. You can order one in an array of different materials. He's got steel, he's got bronze, he's got phosphor bronze, I think he's got brass. He even makes a Damascus steel, uh, a lap steel bar, a tone bar. Pretty amazing stuff. And you have to contact him to order these slides. You can't just click it, add it to your cart, and away you go. You have to send him an email, you gotta do the secret handshake, and you'll get an amazing slide. Seriously, the Daddy Slide slides are the best I've ever experienced. And again, I'm, blame, I'm blaming Charlie Parr for this one because he's the one that told me about them, and it's his fault that I'm gonna spend some dollars on these slides. There you have it, a tour de force of some of my favorite guitar slide companies, some of my favorite guitar slides. I hope you found this list informative, and I hope it allows you to, well, more than dip your toe in the world of slide guitar. There's some great options out there, and I think anybody from this list will provide you with a fantastic slide that you can experiment with, that you can try out, and ultimately hone in and target the slide that you want. Now, I do have a question for you. What's your favorite slide? For those of you slide guitar players that are watching the show right now, what's a slide that has knocked your socks off? Go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Please grab your guitar. Now it's time to see what the TAC family is working on today. Every day within Tony's Acoustic Challenge, we focus on one of the five essential categories of guitar improvement. On Mondays, we do a technique challenge. Tuesdays, a guitar lick challenge. Wednesdays, an improvisation challenge. Thursdays, a rhythm guitar challenge. And Fridays, a chord transition challenge. It is Tuesday. The TAC family is working on a guitar lick. And here is what they're playing with today. Your guitar lick for today is entitled Zombie Walk because it's kind of creepy in the key of A minor and it walks up the guitar neck using chord shapes. This is a great ending lick and it actually exposes a greater lesson on ending songs with multiple chord voicings. Let me go ahead and play this for you and then I'll show it to you in context and a way to take just a tiny part of this lick and use it in your rhythm guitar playing. It's a really fun and useful way to spice up your rhythm playing and kind of add some extra creepy vibe to A minor. Let me go ahead and play it for you. Uh, here's exactly how it sounds. It's very A minor, especially towards the end because we're really hammering that A minor chord with different voicings. I'll explain here in a moment. TAC fam, go ahead and log in. This is your daily challenge today. Uh, go ahead and learn it note for note. Click start challenge. It'll take you to the teaching video. And then once you get it under your fingers, move to the play along video. Uh, go ahead and pick a speed that works for you. And don't forget to open up the tab. Click the icon, click the icon <laughs> in the lower right hand corner. That'll allow you to take the tab and open it up right next to the video. So you can see both things at once. Okay, so this particular lick, one of the things I wanna emphasize right off the bat is I wanna ditch the single notes and just look at the chords, right? All we're doing to the, at the end of this lick is using different chord voicings. This is a great technique you can employ to the end of any song. Use multiple chord voicings. Um, and all we're talking about with chord voicings, if you're not familiar with that term, is chords are made up of three notes. Uh, the first, we'll, we'll say the first, the third, and the fifth, okay? Uh, for those music theory geeks, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not a music theory geek, don't worry about it. Three notes, okay? And a voicing is those notes in a certain order. When you switch the voicing, those notes move to a different order. And when you switch it again, my fingers don't bend that way, but those notes move to a different order. So that's all we're doing here. We're playing an A minor chord here, A minor chord here, A minor chord here. If you wanna get crazy, you can go clear up to the 12th fret and play it there. It's a wonderful way to cap off a song because it kind of, um, it drives home the key, but it also adds this wonderful timbre and, and tonal flavor that really um, wonderfully punctuates 
the, the song. Uh, almost as if an ellipse, if you were to use an ellipses if you were writing, you know those three dots? That's kind of how I think of it, is, is the first dot, the second dot, and the third dot. If you want to get crazy, like I said, and add the fourth dot, boom, you've got that A minor chord clear up here. My fingers are a little fat, so I really got to cram them in. But anyway, so that's that's one use of it. Uh, the second use of this lick is to ignore the chords at the end and just chop off that first measure and a beat and actually adjust the starting point to where we're just using this piece. so on and so forth. It really ekes out the creepiness of A minor, the minorness of A minor. And really the driving force behind this uh, are the double stops on the high two strings. The, the ones we're playing over are, are these. Right, not, not exactly, but that's where the idea comes from, using those in a descending fashion so that we can kind of lead the listener back to an A minor or lead the listener tonally from a higher timbre to a lower timbre, uh, higher notes to lower notes. So again, I hope you really dig this. Uh, it's a fun way to, to mess around with in a minor key because they are so emotionally charged. Uh, I'm talking minor keys in general, especially when you use that multiple chord voicings at the end. Uh, I think that's something, if anything you pull out of this, that's the one thing I want you to pull out because it's, it's incredibly, incredibly useful regardless of what key you're playing in, but especially in minor keys. Okay, I'll get off the soapbox about how awesome chord voicings are. <laughs> One more thing before we get back to the show. <clears throat> um, I brought up comparison thinking quite a bit on the show. And the thing that really uh, we automatically go to when we think of comparison thinking is uh, playing skill level. Oh, that player's better than me. That player knows more than me. Uh, but that comparison thinking can also creep into our guitar routine, comparing your guitar routine to someone else's guitar routine, when the reality is they're incomparable. It's even, they're, they're more incomparable than, than apples and oranges because your unique life situation is different than someone else's unique life situation. Your unique life situation calls for a certain guitar routine that works for you. That might be three days a week. And if you're able to maintain that consistently, that's awesome. And you should pat yourself on the back. Whereas somebody else's unique life situation might drive them or allow them to play for 15 minutes a day, every single day of the week, seven days a week. That works for them. Your guitar routine is not less than, if it's a lesser number of days or lesser time, especially if it works for you. The key measure to an effective guitar routine is consistency. So don't go, try your best not to go comparing your routine to someone else's. Because again, different life situations will dictate what guitar routine uh, will work for these individual life situations. As long as you can maintain that consistency, your guitar routine is good enough. It's perfect. If you can maintain consistency, your guitar routine is perfect. So try your, try your best to avoid that comparison thinking, of course, when it comes to playing, but also when it comes to your guitar routine. During the last Tony's Acoustic Challenge 90 Day Progress Party, I had the absolute pleasure of talking to TAC family member Trish. Trish is a TAC family member and she's also participating in the Guitars for Vets program. She has some very specific goals and in our discussion, she talked about how she was gonna achieve those goals. Here's what she had to say. Yeah, so um, trying to learn my graduation song by heart. I, okay. I'm not gonna be able to play it by heart for probably the graduation that should come up here in the next month, but I wanna learn it by heart and I wanna be able to play it without, you know, anywhere I am. If somebody asks me to play a song, I'm like, here you go. This is my song. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's great. So, what's um, if you wouldn't mind me asking, what what are the steps that you're gonna kind of uh, go through to to help internalize the song? Because you have a lot of elements. You know, you got lyrics, you got chords. Um, have you identified that plan? And and if so, what, what is it? Yeah, I have actually just sitting here today, um, going through the goal and the milestones. My fast start is to learn the chord progression, so the verses versus the chorus, and you know. It, 
it's it's pretty standard, so it shouldn't be too hard. There's only four chords. So just learn the chord progression, you know, what order they go into, and then learn the words, and then try to put it all together in, in the three, four time that the song is in. Trish mentioned something incredibly important when it comes to achieving your guitar goals. You know that whole saying, you can't eat an elephant in one bite? Well, Trish applied that very philosophy to achieving her goal. She broke down the big goal into small, achievable milestones that she could do step by step until she gets to her goal. And that's important. It's something I wanted to share with you because if you have a goal you're working towards, don't just think that you're gonna start here and end up at your goal. You have to break it down into milestones because this way, each and every time you sit down with your guitar, you're taking a small step towards that goal. And those small steps add up. Now, Trish also mentioned that she has some travel coming up and that's gonna get in the way of her progress, but she shared a bit of a travel tip. Here's what she's doing so that she can still practice her guitar while on the road. What is an obstacle that you know, could potentially derail you and, and what are you gonna do to get around that? Sure, um, I've got some travel coming up this, actually this week, um, getting on an airplane. And so it's funny, I, I bought this thing and you know, I don't know, I found oh. it online. Have you seen one of these? Yeah. So I'm putting it in my luggage and I'm, you know, if nothing else, I can do the form for the chords. It doesn't sound like anything, even though it has, you know, you can tighten them, but it doesn't sound like anything. So just, I'll, you know, I'll be able to log in um, and just kind of mentally go through the, the, the lessons and then yeah. work on my song. Really excellent stuff from Trish. And I want to thank her for sharing some insight into her guitar journey. And it's so cool that she found something that will help her maintain her guitar playing routine, even though she's traveling and she can't travel with a full guitar. And she found something that will still allow her to progress, that will still allow her to maintain her routine. Really awesome stuff. And again, Trish, thank you so much for sharing. All right, let's head on down to Tampa, Florida. No, we're not gonna check out a Tampa Bay Lightning game, although I would love to see Andre Vasilevsky play in person. No, 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 uh, today we're gonna head down to Tampa to visit guitar geek Charles Calandra. He's got a guitar snow that he wants us to check out. Here's what he says. Dear Tony, I've compiled this list of guitars to identify the year, make, and model. The guitars are depicted in the photographs from the viewers left to right. First up, a 2015 Handmade Electric by Jim Bonnell, a 1979 Fender Stratocaster, a 1979 Gibson Les Paul, onto the Steel String Acoustics, a 2016 Martin D28, a 2019 Martin D45, a 2014 Guild D55, and a 1979 Guild D55. So far, it seems like 1979 is a good year for Charles. He's got three guitars from that year. Let's move on to the classicals. First, we have a 2007 Manuel Raimundo. Next, a 2009 Manuel Rodriguez Jr., a 1963 Martin 28C, and a 2013 handmade Goyette. He says, excluding the listed electric guitars, all of the acoustic guitars are used in performances depending on the venue and audience size. Take note that my two go-to guitars are the 2007 Raimundo Classical and the 1979 Guild D55 Dreadnought. Both are fitted with active pickups for live and virtual events. Well, Charles, thank you so much for sharing your guitar snow with all of us. And if you're sitting at home thinking, you know what? It is time. I'm gonna get my guitar snow on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Well, I want you to. I want your fellow guitar geeks to see your guitar snow. And if you wanna get your guitar snow featured, here's how you do it. I wanna to propose to you a win, win, win scenario. I wanna feature you on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Yes, I wanna feature you and your guitar snow or you and your Acoustic Tuesday merchandise. Step number one, go to tonypolacastro.com forward slash shop. Once you're there, pick out your favorite guitar snow shirt, your favorite Acoustic Tuesday merchandise, get it shipped directly to your door. Step number two, once your merchandise arrives, go ahead and put it on and take a picture of yourself, either just wearing Acoustic Tuesday merchandise or if you have a guitar signal shirt, take a picture in front of all of your guitars. And then once you're done with that, step number three is to upload your picture at tonypolacastro.com forward slash shop. There's a link right on that page. Click it, you can upload your photo and boom, you'll be featured in the Acoustic Tuesday show. 
Win number one, you get featured in the Acoustic Tuesday show. Win number two, you get some cool snazzy Guitar Geek merchandise. Win number three, the biggest win of them all, all proceeds from the TonyPolacastro.com forward slash shop are being donated to Guitars for Vets. You get featured in the show, you get cool new shirts, cool new merchandise, and you help out Guitars for Vets. Win, win, win. Okay, back to the show. Now it's time for your weekly dose of acoustic news you can use. Let's go ahead and dig right in. Did you know that Tulsa, Oklahoma is now home to the Bob Dylan Center, which just happens to be a few blocks away from the Woody Guthrie Museum? Uh, pretty cool stuff. Yeah, the Bob Dylan Center just opened up in Tulsa, Oklahoma, I guess within the last month or so. And for any Bob Dylan fan, for any music fan in general, this place needs to be on your list. I found a great little news clip of a quick little tour of this Bob Dylan Center, and wow, does it contain some magical items. Here's the clip. A former paper warehouse, which now holds 100,000 items from the artist's long-rumored archives. Here we have a letter from Bob Dylan to Jimi Hendrix remarking on Hendrix's remarkable <laughs> cover version of All Along the Watchtower. Stephen Jenkins is the center's director. Here is the actual tambourine that inspired the song Mr. Tambourine Man. The University of Tulsa and local billionaire George Kaiser bought the archive in 2016 for an estimated $20 million. Part Next up is an American primitive guitarist that you need to hear. This is an American primitive guitarist that you likely have never heard of before. However, you need to. If you like John Fahey, if you like Daniel Bachman, if you like Gwenifer Raymond, you need to check out Robert Barnett. Yes, his compositions very much harken back to those of John Fahey. He has two albums out, Afterglow and Voiceless. Afterglow is the most recent album, and we should go ahead and listen to a song off of that album. This is entitled Tacoma Dance. If you like Robert's music and you want to order an album, you can do that off of his Bandcamp page. That's robertbarnett.bandcamp.com. Moving on to another news item. This comes from Caitlin Canty, one of my favorite songwriters of all time. She posted a, a story about an anniversary, and I wanted to read it on the show because it kind of shows her origins as a songwriter and the moment that she decided that she was going to do it. Here's what she says. Today is a big anniversary, marked the beginning in my calendar. It's the day in 2009 I quit my job working in a beige cubicle to write songs and tour them. I knew I'd have to give myself time to get better at writing, singing, playing my guitar, recording. My full-time job didn't leave space for much else, and I realized I wouldn't ever write a good song if I didn't change how I spent my time. I was burning to give it a shot, and the thought of failing didn't seem as scary as never trying. I figured I'd run at my dream until reality caught me. I'm still running. Though this has been the longest pause in touring I've had since the beginning, took a tornado, pandemic, and a baby to deliver a real break in the action, but now I feel like I'm back at the start in a good way. Every time I play my guitar, it feels exciting, and I've been writing fresh songs on the porch during my kid's nap and my first show in two years is in two weeks with Noam Pekilny. Just uh, great stuff to hear, you know, to, to, to hear someone describe the moment that they decided they were gonna go for it, the fears, the anxiety, the leap that they had to take. I mean, how cool and how really inspirational it is. Um, Caitlin is one of my favorite songwriters. She played at the Acoustic Life Festival 2018, 2017, uh, quite a ways back. And it was one of the most enjoyable performances ever. It was pin drop silent. 
and uh, uh, it was just it was it was pure magic. It was beautiful. So uh, so great to hear that she's got a new album that is about to be released, and that she is starting to uh, hop back into the touring mode. Uh, very cool stuff. I've got another news item for you, and this one comes from bassist Marcus Miller. Yes, Marcus Miller, you're thinking tone. This is Acoustic Tuesday. Why is an electric bassist being featured? He's being featured because of his perspective on mistakes. And I put that in quotes for a reason. Well, actually, let me go ahead and show you this video clip of Marcus Miller describing mistakes. And then you'll realize why I put it in quotes. But there's no mistakes, okay? Unless you decide it's a mistake. If you're playing, I mean, I've had things, man, where I'm, I'm like a... That note that doesn't quite... <laughs> and I hit it, I go... If you just give yourself and say, hey, that's not what I meant to do, but that's kind of cool. That's not what I meant to do, but I'm going to make something out of that. And last, but certainly not least, I want to share with you some music from Christina Vane. Now, I've mentioned her on the Acoustic Tuesday before. She kind of sits in the blues realm. She also plays a little bit of banjo. Bonus points for that. Uh, she just released an album back on May 20th entitled Make Myself Me Again. But I want to draw your attention to a solo performance that she recorded uh, for Paste Magazine. This is just her and her resonator guitar. This is just her and her banjo. You know, these new recordings are more in a band setting, and that's beautiful and awesome in and of its own right. But to hear her play these songs with just her and just the instrument is magical. Here's a little clip. And it's been a long, long while, but I'd love to meet you now. Somewhere across God's golden shore. Sometimes I And on those notes, I think it's a great time to wrap up the Acoustic Tuesday show for today. But first, let's take a sneak peek into next week. And next week will mark the return of the Lesson Behind the Lick segment. In fact, this segment will find us digging into drop D tuning and all the benefits that it offers. If you've ever wondered about drop D tuning, next week's episode is for you. And remember, you can catch Acoustic Tuesday every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time right here on YouTube. One more thing before I let you go for the day, please do remember this. Your guitar success, however you define it, is directly related to your guitar routine. So please invest the time in developing your guitar routine and make sure to have fun every single day that you play. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for sharing your time with me. Thank you for being a guitar geek. And I'll see you next Tuesday on the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Cheers and guitar geeks unite.